Welcome to part four of my C programming series. Uh, we're making a tic-tac-toe simulator in C. Hopefully I will be wrapping it up in this one. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot left to do. Um, but I'm sitting here, my eyes are a little burnt from working in the garden this afternoon. and Sweat running in my eyes, so we'll see how long I last. Um, when we last left, um, we had the thing working. Had it play in games, had it play in 10,000 games, and they were all coming up ties. So it seemed like we solved the problem of making the making the computer players smart enough to tie every time. Um, now the thing I didn't do before I signed off was to commit everything, you know, commit all the work and and uh, push it to the repository. So I need to do that now. I'll go to the Magit. I looked that up the other day. It is Magit, not Magit which is good, so, um, <clears throat> so come in here, we've got changes, unstage changes, we'll stage them, hit C, C to commit them, and then we can push it to the repository with a capital P, and then a small P, and it goes ahead and pushes it. I believe that should push it out to the remote. We'll check the remote later when we're finished. Make sure it's all pushed out to GitLab. Okay, so that's committed. We've got it smart enough to have all ties. Um, I made a note here to double check a billion games. I actually did the math on that. A billion games I think would take about seven hours. So I'm not going to do that while I'm doing the video here. But I am going to do, I think we'll do a million once, once we get this other stuff changed. And uh, that should only take a few minutes. Um, at ten thousand games, it you know pretty well pretty well established that it works, which is what we had already done. Um, now, I wanted to do it, it does loop and do multiple games. It reports on the totals, but I'd like to have it. I'd like to be able to enter the number of games on the command line. That was one one more thing to add. So right here. We just have it hard coded in to do 10,000 games. Well, to put the number of games on the command line, you have to get the. That's what these arguments up here are about. Um, argc holds the number of arguments on the command line, and that's that's always at least one because the the name of the program is the first the first argument. And then this is an array of pointers to the arguments on the command line. So what we want to do is let's say we'll have a number of games and we'll go ahead and set it to 10,000 as a default let's say and then we'll say if there is a if there is an argument on the command line in other words if there's more than one thing there more than just the name of the program then we want to set in equal to um, actually I gotta stop and think what is the command for getting we want it to we're gonna have a string we need to turn the string into a number so I believe the command for that is string to L yes convert a string value to a long that's what we want to do um, so yeah this returns we have to give it the we have to give it the pointer to the string and then an end pointer which we don't need so that can just be null and then the base which is we'll we'll enter them in base 10 um let's see and that's going to return that as a long okay Now, what if it doesn't find a number? That's what I'm wondering about. If it doesn't find a number, it returns zero. Okay, that's what I wondered. And it sets the global variable, error no. Okay. All right. So, all right, so I don't want to do that this way then. Or, well, I still want to do it this way, but we'll, we'll deal with that afterwards. So, string T-O-L argv 
one, which would be the 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 second string in the in the command after the name of the program. Um, no, and then ten for the base ten. Okay, and then here's where we can say, and we'll go ahead, and, and then after that we'll say if n or just we'll, we'll say if not n meaning if n got set to zero then we'll set n equal to ten thousand and that's where we'll set up the default so we don't need the default up here okay so it's going to look at the arguments if there is an argument it's going to get it as a number turn it into turn it into well we're going to have to turn it into a long which I'm then just going to cast to an int because we're not going to give it any really enormous number of, of games and then if there's nothing there then go ahead and use the default of 10,000 and then we'll go up to n instead of going up to 10,000 all right now one thing another thing I had done is right here I had it um, breaking out of the loop if it did find something that wasn't a tie. We don't really need that anymore because that was really just for testing. Okay. So let's make it. Oops. Need to be in the directory. Okay, we have a warning. Variable n is used uninitialized whenever the yeah, okay, whenever the if condition is false. Well, that's reasonable. What they're saying is, right here, if there is no, um, if there is no argument, this isn't going to get done, and so n is still going to be null or undefined, which because it's undefined up here, or unset, or whatever you'd want to call it. And the same thing here. Yeah, it's just it's just a warning because it doesn't really like the way I'm the way I did that, but. It's actually, I could, I could leave it that way, but if I just want to shut up the warnings, I can come back up here and set it to zero, and then the warnings are gone. All right, so now we can run TTT bot with, say, one, and it just plays one game with five, five games, 11 games. Okay. Now back to the code here. Another thing I wanted to do was take out some of the printing that's really not necessary. Um, some of the printing that was just in here for testing purposes. Um, we can change these to debug statements so that they can be turned off. somewhere I call print board so let's find that okay that's in the report the winner we don't need that so let's just comment that out for now okay there's another print board on take a turn all right let's see what how that does okay and we don't need to say how every game ended. Basically, I just want to print out the results at the end. Because if I'm going to run this a million times, I don't want it telling me every, the result of every game. Um, okay, so that's right here. We'll make that a debug also. Because as long as debug up here is set to zero, none of the debug statements will actually do anything. Because of right here, if not debug return right out of that right out of that uh, routine okay so all we get now is the report so let's go up to 10,000 let's go up to a million uh, is that a million yeah six zeros okay how long did that take two two point four two seconds 
was how long that took. Um, okay, so a million games in 2.42 seconds. Multiply that by a thousand for a billion games, you'd have well, two two thousand four hundred seconds. You'd have well, it'd still be less than an hour. I was thinking it was going to be several hours. It's it'd be like 40, 40, 40 45 minutes. Still longer than we want to sit here and wait. But anyway, all right, back to back to org file. All right, it takes the number of games on the command line now. Oh, one thing to try. What if I don't give it a number? If I give it like A, then it defaults to the number of 10,000. Now, I could do something different there. I could have it come up and say, hey, that, you know, that's not a number. You need to put in, you know, you need to put in a number. In fact, let's do that. Because that really, that's really a better way to handle that sort of thing. A more realistic way to handle it. Okay, so here we get a number. If the number is, or let's go back up here, let's make 10,000 the default again up there. Now we'll say if n is not a number, if n got set to zero or null, which I, I don't think that's even possible, but if it got set to zero, then let's print f, let's print a usage statement. Um, usage. some Perl earlier today, and I'm typing in Perl. Okay, and then we want to exit on that. Let's make that um, not exit. There we go, I'm thinking in Perl again. Okay, let's return with an error number to say, hey, that's not right. You can't do that. Okay. There. So now, if you give it the, if you give it a letter or something that's not a number, it says, "Hey, you need to give me a number of games." Now, let's run it without anything. Then it should still default to ten thousand. Okay. And if we do give it a number, then it plays that many games. Okay. That's all good. So that works, and we can enter it on the command line. Documentation and comments. Um, I'm not going to get too carried away with that because this is a small program. Um, I'm one of those that believes code should be self-documenting as much as possible. You, you know, your code should be clear enough that another program and looking at it should be able to pretty quickly say what's going on here. You know, like here. Anyone with any experience will look at this and say, okay, init board, this is obviously setting something up. That's what init means. And then here we have a loop. Something's looping 10 times. It's, and it's, okay, we're, so we're clearing this array, setting all its values to zero. That's, you know, simple enough. There's a, you know, some people would come in here and say, okay, this is, we have a, we have a function called print board. And so they'd say print board. And then what does it do? It prints the board. That, that sort of thing gets to be just extra clutter in your program. And you can do that, but um, they might even come in and, you know, let's make this more work. Let's, let's put in something like um, returns, you know, void, you know, returns nothing or something like that. You know, it's just, you can see that right here. It says void. That's what that means. It returns nothing. So... To me, that sort of thing, to me, when you start adding comments to comment things that are already obvious, you're just cluttering up your program. Um, comments should be to explain things that aren't obvious. Um, so I would not add that. Now, there are places where a comment, you know, would probably be a good thing. Um, let's see. Actually, here's something. Let's move this print board up here. Put it back in. Because if there's a winner, that's that actually means there's a 
there's a bug in the program that we didn't discover so let's print the board but anyway I think that's that's been pretty well tested you know some of this stuff now look for winter block that was a somewhat complicated not complicated but there's some complexity to this function and so you could you could write a comment for that you know now, I wouldn't I don't like to repeat the name of the thing because it's right there um, One thing too, if you're using certain certain code documenters, you can put certain keyword keywords in up here. I haven't used that sort of thing much, but you can put certain keywords up here to like like at return that then your document like Doxygen or something like that will pick that up and say, okay, you can sort of document your your stuff automatically with that. Um, and that's that's that is more useful if you've got a large project you've got a lot of stuff you have to document um, return the player who made the move Let's see so you can put in something like that and that does give you a little more little more information about what's going on before you start digging into this to see what what is actually going on in here um, but like I said, there's not, you know, there's not that much to say about this thing. You know, if you followed along with me, you know, it only took a couple hours to write this. And that was, a lot of that time was taken up talking about it. So, um, really the main place I would probably add some information would be up here at the top. sort of thing just to explain a little bit more what the program is about but anyway that's you know you just do as much commenting you know more I guess is better than less uh, more commenting is better than not enough um, here I've got, I like to keep these in alphabetical order as much as possible um, but yeah more more commenting is better than not enough but you can also get carried away with it one thing too you know when you're when you're distributing something like this you can also have documentation in a completely separate file you, know, you, you can have a readme and or a org file or a you know various files like that that um, can explain things without having it mixed into your code all right um, I had a note here about possibly refactoring some things off into an include file but I'm not going to do that because really there that would be overkill um, basically you could move just a few things here like um, these defines you could put them off in an include file but then it'd be kind of pointless um, there's only one dot C file here so there's really no need to it, it doesn't have anything to share with any other files or anything like that so there's just really no point in that so I'm not gonna do that that'll come up next project probably um, one thing I wanted to do was add some defines to make some things more obvious what's going on um, for instance this flag this win or block flag the they have to pass a one you pass a 1 to this to look for wins and you pass a negative 1 to look for blocks well we know that because we created the, the program and so we know that's what it does uh, where does it do that right down here it passes a 1 
to look for a win, and it passes a negative one to look for a block. Well, that's not obvious to somebody who's never seen this before. So what if we change these to flag win block? And then up in the at the top, we can define those. that and that makes it a little more obvious what's going on that you know when that's being called where'd that go when that's being called okay well right here you're looking for a win and right here you're looking for a block so little little things like that defining constants can can clear things up that wouldn't necessarily have been obvious otherwise um don't need this reminder anymore what else could possibly be set that way? Um, there isn't a whole lot. Some of these things, like here, the eight, you could say you, you could change that to something like rows to try or something, but I. It's it's being you don't even need the eight because it's being defined by this structure that's set equal to here. So the eight could just be left out altogether. Um, so I don't know. I I think I'll leave that alone. Um, I think that's. I think that's about it. I don't think there's any place where we actually say X or O. Well, yeah, there is right here. But the, yeah, I, yeah, we don't want we don't want to mess with that. I, some things you you can't try to make too obvious. Um, yeah, I could come in here. The, the thing is. X's wins are being saved in wins to the second or the array array element two, which is actually the third element of wins. But X, the player, is actually one. So we could change this to something like player X plus one, but then that's that's getting confusing. Uh, let's just leave that at two. You don't have to make things too easy. Um, okay. So we put in a couple of defines to make the, the, the flag thing more clear. All right, so so let's test it one more time. There's 111 games. If I give it A, it complains, doesn't play anything. A million games. All right, a million ties. 2.4 seconds, pretty consistent. I'm not really running much else on the system right now other than other than this uh, screen capture thing. Um, OBS to, to do that and a, a couple of browsers things, but um, not a lot of competition for it. All right, so let us commit it. Commit the changes to those two files. CC to commit. And then push it. All right. Nothing to commit. Let's go to GitLab. home page come on browser too many windows open or tabs whatever
sign in. Okay. Shows some things just being pushed, and there's my last commit message, so everything is here. I think this was still, was this still private? How do you tell? I think maybe that's what that means. How do I tell if it's private? Where is it? Go away. Um, got to be got to be something up here to tell me I think the little lock here means that it's private Okay, how do I make it unprivate? I'm trying. back to that. I don't don't need to sit here and watch me try to find the find the switch for that. Um okay, back to here, back to my .org file. We've committed it and push it it. All right, that just leaves I want to talk a little about a little bit about future projects. Um if anyone has any feedback anything you'd like to ask me to do or talk about on these videos or anything like that you can reach me at Aaron at Baher biz there's my address right there um, you can also leave comments under these videos um, not on my blog I don't have comments there but you can at the at the video hosting site and I'll I'll discover them there within a day or two um, but certainly feel free to email me um, I'm thinking that my next project may be to do this in assembly language I've been kinda kicking that around in my head a little bit um, that would take considerably longer. Um, that would be probably several hours instead of three or four or whatever this has been. Um, you know, I'm thinking that might be a 10 or 12 hour thing. Um, and I might do it. I might I might actually do it in two assembly languages. I might do it in uh, Commodore 64, uh, 6502, and then again in a, in a modern... Um, 64 bit so do it once in 8 bit and then in 64 bit just for just kind of for fun I know the 8 bit stuff better um, even though it's not real um, real strong on my memory anymore but um, I do know the 8 bit stuff better than the 64 bit stuff obviously the 64 bit um, version would be considerably faster uh, but they'd both be interesting to do so that's one thing I'm thinking about um, I also have a spam filter project that I've already started I've been actually started a few years ago and then I let it sit for a while I came back to it a couple months ago um, that I'm writing in C um, it's quite a bit more complicated than this was it's um, it, it deals with it has to it has to deal with allocating memory um, a lot of string processing um, 
a lot of comparing strings and, and that sort of thing. So there's there's it's more complicated than this. The last time I was looking at it, it was leaking memory like a sieve, and I was needing to figure out why that is. So that might be something I look at, although, like I said, it, it's already an ongoing thing, so it, I wouldn't be showing it all. I'd be jumping in the middle of it. But that'd be a possibility, too. Um, and then there, there's plenty of other things that, that, I, that I'm working on that I could show. Um, but those are kind of two that come to the forefront. So if anyone has any opinions on that, um, drop me a line, let me know. Um, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, hope you found it um, a little bit educational or entertaining or you know, whatever you might get out of it um, as to how programming something fairly simple in C goes. And uh, look forward to doing some more videos like this in the future. And uh, thanks for watching.